Hello, thank you for joining our discussion today, data-driven proposals using ATE survey findings in your next ATE proposal. I'm your presenter, Valerie, and I look forward to outlining six key tips for using data from the ATE survey to craft data-informed ATE proposals. I will be using and referencing results from the 2019 ATE survey, which is the most recent report that is currently available. You can access and download the full 2019 ATE survey report at the following web address on your screen, where you can also access survey reports from previous years. Before we begin, it's important to note that any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed here today are those of the presenters and do not necessarily reflect those of NSF. The ATE survey is part of Evaluate, which is the evaluation hub for the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education Program, or ATE program. Evaluate serves the ATE community and other STEM evaluators by offering trainings, cultivating a network, researching emerging topics, and collecting data about the ATE program. The ATE survey is completed annually by ATE-funded grants who are active at some point between January 1st to December 31st. Grants are asked to report on activities that they completed during this time, which provides an overview of all ATE program activities and achievements. And like previous years, the response rate for the 2019 ATE survey was 92%. This remarkable response rate is the result of dedication from ATE grants and the hard work of Evaluate Survey staff, including Lissa, Lori, and myself, who are responsible for the survey administration, analysis, and disseminating survey findings. The first tip for using the ATE survey findings to write a data-informed proposal is to familiarize yourself with the activities and achievements of ATE projects and centers. This will give you a sense of what the ATE program is currently funding and what grantees are doing. For example, almost a fourth of ATE projects in 2018 were in the area of advanced manufacturing technologies, followed by information and securities technologies and general advanced technological education. In contrast, only 6% of projects were in the area of bio and chemical technologies and 3% were in the area of micro and nanotechnologies. The survey report also highlights the primary activities of ATE projects. You can see in the graph that the projects most frequently engage in professional development for educators and educational materials development and dissemination. Understanding the types of activities and STEM areas that are currently funded by the ATE program can help you determine whether your proposal is a good fit for this program. With an understanding of current grant activities, you can begin to situate your proposed activities within the existing ATE portfolio. This is where it's helpful to reflect and ask yourself, where does your proposed project fit in? Are you filling a gap or proposing something novel? For example, as we saw on the previous slide, a smaller proportion of grants reported providing support for students to transition into college or conducting research in 2018, which signals potential areas where additional work could be useful. Turning to another example, 35% of ATE projects created or modified at least one academic course in 2018. As shown here, only 6% of two-year colleges developed or modified online courses in 2018. Given an increase in distance learning, does your institution need financial support for transitioning technical classes to an online environment? This is one way that your proposal could meet an institutional need while also proposing something novel. This is just one example among many where you can use the ATE survey findings to point to where your proposed activities might be meeting a need. Tip number three is to use the ATE survey findings to generate ideas for additional activities to include in your proposal. This involves considering how various activities could benefit your proposal. For example, 45% of ATE projects reported creating or substantially modifying educational materials in 2018. Examples of educational materials developed included assessment activities or tests, lab experiments, and course curricula. If your proposal included developing or modifying educational materials, have you thought about all of these materials? How could they benefit your work or target audience in a way that you may not have previously considered? Perhaps you're proposing a collaboration with, biz with business and industry. 
While you may have considered serving on an advisory board or identifying workforce needs, did you also consider how this collaboration could provide educators with occupational experience or support business incubation? The ATE survey report can provide great insight into how other ATE projects are currently collaborating with business and industry, which could inspire you to include some of these in your proposal. The ATE survey report attempts to highlight issues of importance to the STEM field and to the National Science Foundation. This brings us to our fourth tip, considering the connection between your proposal and larger themes in the field of career and technical education. Many of the topics addressed in the survey report reflect issues that are of interest to a broad range of STEM and industry st stakeholders. Workplace-based learning, for example, represents one such area. 40% of projects reported providing these opp opportunities to students in 2018. Developing career pathways in STEM and increasing workplace-based learning opportunities are national priorities. As shown here, almost half of ATE projects who provided workplace-based learning opportunities for students did so in the form of internships with only 14% offering apprenticeships and 2% offering externships. Recruiting and maintaining engagement of women and students of color in STEM is also an area of need and a priority. As this data shows, for example, the proportion of male students in certificate and associate degree programs in 2018 outpaced female students. Broadening participation in STEM for underrepresented groups is an important initiative for NSF. Consider how your proposal is speaking to the issue and others addressed throughout the ATE survey report. As you review the ATE survey report, make sure that you are also taking notice of what kinds of questions come to mind. Are there certain activities or topics that jump out at you? Where would you like to learn more? Asking yourself these questions is one way to use the survey data to spark specific research questions to propose a targeted research project or to integrate a research component into your project proposal. As shown here, 14 ATE projects were specifically funded to conduct targeted research, and 40 ATE projects also indicated that they had a research component to their project in 2018. Reading through the ATE survey report might spark questions that lead to ideas for additional research. For example, as we discussed in the previous tip, a potential research question could seek to explore how ATE projects recruit students from different groups, such as students of color, women, or first-generation students. There's a lot of potential for research in ATE, and the survey report can help identify those questions for further investigation. I've given you a lot of tips to consider in using the ATE survey findings when crafting your ATE proposal. What I haven't said explicitly is to make sure that you reference the data in your proposal. Including the data and the citation for the report itself demonstrates to reviewers that you have done your homework and you're being intentional about how your proposal can advance the ATE field. The last page of the survey report, shown here, provides all of the information that you need for a proper citation. Using findings from the ATE survey is one method for supporting data-driven work and can help increase the quality of your proposal. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope that you will find this information useful to the development of your ATE proposal. If you'd like to learn more about the ATE survey or evaluate, please visit the website on your screen. Thanks again and take care.